Mars is the ambitious destination for SpaceX and Elon Musk in 2030. But you probably know that reaching the red planet, which is an average of about 140 million miles from Earth, would be a colossal feat. This led to a nearly two-year-long journey that was a nightmare for astronauts who must navigate numerous risks in deep space. The only solution is to increase the speed of the spacecraft. This is where nuclear systems come into play. So, to realise his ambitions, how will Elon Musk incorporate nuclear energy into the Starship? Why is this inherently hazardous nuclear energy garnering attention for space exploration activities? Let's find out in today's episode. But first, we need your support. This is my new space channel and we're on the way to reaching the first 100 subscribers. Your support means the universe to us. Hit subscribe now and get ready for an out of this world adventure. You won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. Mars, the fourth planet from the sun, is Earth's second closest neighbors in the solar system. However, the actual distance between the two worlds is far greater than one might expect. In an ideal alignment, when Mars is at its closest point to Earth and Earth is at its farthest from the Sun, the two planets would be just 54.6 million kilometres apart. Unfortunately, such a perfect approach has never occurred in recorded history. At their most distant, when they are on opposite sides of the Sun, Mars and Earth can be as far as 401 million kilometres from each other. On average, the gap between them is around 225 million kilometres, and a journey to Mars typically takes about nine months. Spending extended time in space presents serious risks, especially due to cosmic radiation. Though space appears vast and empty, it is filled with high-energy particles moving at near-light speed, which can bombard spacecraft and astronauts like microscopic bullets. A Mars mission would expose travellers to approximately 1,000 millisieverts of radiation, about eight times the annual limit for radiation workers on Earth. Over the course of the journey, astronauts would accumulate roughly one-third of NASA's maximum lifetime exposure threshold set between 2,500 and 3,250 MSV. Therefore, minimising travel time is the only effective way to reduce radiation exposure. To achieve the scale of interplanetary travel envisioned by Elon Musk, spacecraft will need to be much faster. Musk has previously suggested alternative propulsion methods, including nuclear-powered rockets. In fact, he has highlighted this as a promising area of research, even urging NASA to explore it further in a 2019 tweet. So, to understand how Starship could become a nuclear-powered spacecraft, let's first explore the reasons behind the push for faster space travel with a nuclear propulsion system. By the way, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so we can reach our first 100 subscribers. Now, let's get back to the content. Currently, the two most common propulsion systems used in spaceflight are chemical propulsion and solar electric propulsion. Each has its strengths and weaknesses, Chemical propulsion generates a tremendous amount of thrust, making it ideal for launching spacecraft off Earth's surface. However, chemical rockets are not particularly efficient, and their fuel lacks high energy density. For instance, the Saturn V rocket, which carried astronauts to the Moon, produced 35 million newtons of thrust at liftoff, but required a staggering 950,000 gallons of fuel. While much of that fuel was used just to reach orbit, the fundamental limitation is clear. Long-distance space travel demands an enormous amount of heavy fuel. On the other hand, electric propulsion uses energy from solar panels to accelerate ions, producing thrust far more efficiently, up to five times the mass efficiency of chemical rockets. However, this system generates very little actual thrust, typically around three newtons. While the sun provides a nearly unlimited power source, solar energy becomes less effective the farther a spacecraft travels from the sun, making it less viable for deep space missions. This is where nuclear-powered rockets become particularly promising. Their key advantage lies in the extraordinary energy density of nuclear fuel. Uranium, used in nuclear reactors, has an energy density approximately 4 million times greater than that of traditional rocket fuels like hydrazine. This means a spacecraft would need far less fuel for long-duration missions, reducing overall launch mass and logistical challenges. With nuclear propulsion, the journey to Mars could be drastically shortened. 
Instead of the typical nine-month voyage, a nuclear-powered starship could potentially reach the Red Planet in as little as 52 days. This reduction in travel time would not only improve mission efficiency, but also significantly decrease astronauts' exposure to harmful cosmic radiation, making deep space exploration far safer and more feasible. So, how could the design of Starship be adjusted to utilize this energy? Starship will still be a 50M tall steel tube that launches atop the Super Heavy booster, using vacuum-optimized engines fed by large propellant tanks and a set of smaller gimbaled engines optimized for landing, with flaps to handle re-entry. It might be unsurprising to you that we cannot simply bolt on nuclear rockets to the Starship and expect everything to work. Special modifications have to be made to accommodate the new propulsion system, ranging from new attachment points to control software. But we will focus on the most impactful one, radiation shielding. The shape of the Starship is not well adapted to handling the radiation from a nuclear rocket. Large flaps are extending to the sides that could scatter radiation back into the crew compartment at the top. Retracting them when the nuclear rockets are in use would be a good idea. Designs that were meant to be nuclear from the start also usually placed their reactor or nuclear rocket far from the main body of the spaceship on the end of a long boom or tapered propellant tanks. Radiation released from a fission reaction spreads as a sphere in all directions. If it is placed further away, the main body of the spaceship intercepts a smaller fraction of it. The fraction of radiation that cannot be avoided is handled using radiation shielding, with different layers meant to absorb different types of radiation. It is placed as close as possible to the reactors or engines to create the widest shadow of protection, which is why they are also called shadow shields but it also needs to aim to minimize the required shielding mass. Fission primarily produces fission fragments, gamma rays, and neutrons. Fission fragments, being heavy ions, don't travel far. Gamma rays, however, are best absorbed by dense materials, with tungsten being an ideal choice due to its density. Neutrons, which have no charge, are effectively blocked by hydrogen-rich materials like water. To efficiently protect against neutrons, lithium hydride is the preferred material, being mass efficient. Boron carbide is also effective, but is heavier and suitable for surfaces exposed to re-entry heating. Some radiation protection measures have already been integrated. Built-in protection includes a beryllium or graphite reflector within the nuclear reactor, preventing some radiation from escaping. The landing propellant of Starship, especially its methane, also absorbs neutrons. A substantial load of propellant will act as shielding, and the separation between engines and the crew compartment minimizes radiation interception. It's important to note that the effectiveness of radiation shielding doesn't increase linearly, but rather improves exponentially with thickness. This means it's relatively easy to adjust and fine tune the protection levels as needed. Finally, to adapt the spacecraft for nuclear rocket engines, there are key changes in propellant supply. The volume currently used by liquid oxygen would be extended for the nuclear engines, maintaining the total propellant tank volume for a fair comparison with other Starship versions. If liquid hydrogen is chosen as the propellant, specially designed tanks with insulation and active cooling would be necessary. However, with Starship using liquid methane to fuel the nuclear rockets, the existing propellant tanks can be retained. Additionally, adjustments would be needed for the landing propellant tanks. The expected heavier dry mass of a nuclear-powered Starship would require larger tanks to accommodate the increased propellant needed for landing. Now, there is an important that you are wondering. Is a nuclear-powered Starship safe? The answer will be revealed right after you hit the subscribe button. This will be a great motivation for me to create videos every day. Thanks for your support. Honestly, many people's idea of anything nuclear is a disaster waiting to happen or harmful radiation that could make humans die. Let's look at the safety of the riders and the Starship first. The risk of radiation would be mitigated through the rocket's design of liquid propellants. The Starship will still carry propellant for backup stored between the engine and the crew area, blocking out radioactive particles and acting as a good radiation shield. Apart from that, the distance between the crew and the reactor also provides a buffer as the design would place the living quarters at the other end of the rocket to the reactor. So, 
What about the safety of people outside the Starship? Musk has already thought of that in another tweet. He said, the nuclear reactor on board the spacecraft will only kick in when it's cleared the Earth's orbit. The show's Musk is proceeding with lots of caution. This also means the Starship will still be launched by the Super Heavy powered by chemical propellants, but the nuclear reactor will fire up after the two stages separate. Once in orbit, the nuclear reactor can do little harm as blasts and thermal radiation cannot move through a vacuum. If disaster struck and the rocket's reactor broke up, the pieces would not even land on Earth or any other planet for tens of thousands of years. By that time, the radioactive substance would have naturally decayed to the point where it wasn't hazardous anymore. So, a nuclear-powered starship is safe for everybody. At present, we have yet to see any signs from SpaceX regarding a nuclear-powered starship. However, they may be quietly researching this technology behind the scenes. It's also important to recognize that SpaceX has wisely prioritized the key factors needed to make Starship a success, focusing on its current development rather than integrating a nuclear propulsion system that cannot yet be installed in a fully operational spacecraft. For now, Nuclear propulsion systems are only being publicly developed under the direction of U.S. government agencies, specifically NASA. In 2020, the U.S. government put nuclear spacecraft firmly back on the agenda by awarding almost $100 million to three firms, General Atomics, Lockheed Martin and Blue Origin. They will use the money to work on the demonstration rocket for Agile Cislunar Operations, DRACO, program which is funded via the DARPA Research Agency of the U.S. Department of Defense. In the first phase, the companies will aim to show that NTP can be used to fly a rocket above low Earth orbit, with DARPA aiming for thrust-to-weight ratios on par with existing chemical rocket systems. Tabitha Dodson, DARPA Program Manager for Draco, thinks that the successful launch and flight of a nuclear space reactor by the Draco program would revolutionize spaceflight. Unlike today's chemical systems, which have reached a limit in how far they can evolve, nuclear technologies are theorized to evolve to systems such as fusion and beyond, she says. Spacecraft evolved to be maneuvered and powered by nuclear reactors will enable humanity to go farther, with a higher chance of survival and success for any mission type. In the Draco program, General Atomics will design the NTP reactor and draw up a blueprint for a propulsion subsystem, while Blue Origin and Lockheed Martin will plan the spacecraft itself. The fission reactor would use a special high-assay, low-enriched uranium, HALU, which can be made using fuel recycled from existing nuclear reactors. Containing only 20% enriched uranium, it is unsuitable for being turned into nuclear weapons. The reactor would not be turned on until the craft had reached a nuclear safe orbit. In the unlikely event of an emergency, any contamination would, in other words, be harmlessly dissipated into space. Lockheed Martin has already joined forces with BWX Technologies of Lynchburg, Virginia, to develop the reactor and produce the Hulu fuel. BWX says that a Draco rocket could launch as soon as 2027. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.